If you're a Christian and don't have these apps, you're missing out big time. Merry Christmas, everyone. In light of the Christmas season, I figured I'd put together a list of the top four apps that every Christian needs. And if you're not a Christian, check back soon because my next video will be a deep dive on the best accessories for the iPhone. All right, time to take a look at the apps. This first app is called Bible Memory, and it makes it a lot easier to memorize scripture, which is super important because if you're not memorizing scripture, you're spiritually naked, and that's just awkward for everyone. And side note, I'll be showing these applications on a Galaxy S22 Ultra, but the app layouts are going to be very similar regardless of whether you're on an Android device or an iPhone. Using the app is super simple. All you have to do is tap the My Verses section, tap the plus icon at the bottom, then add in any verse you'd like. As you start typing, you'll get recommendations. So I want John, and let's go with a common one, 316. Now all I have to do is tap Import Verse, tap OK, and it'll bring the verse in. You can also select a different translation by tapping this arrow here and selecting one of these translations. Then if you tap Import Verse again, it'll switch the translation. And review frequency is how often you want to try to memorize a scripture. By default, it's set to once per day. And you also have the option to write your own comment or not. Once you've selected your verse, tap the check mark and it'll be added to your list of verses. On this page, there's two tabs. There's the Verses tabs and the Review tab. On the Verses tab, this allows you to add more verses or edit existing verses. And the Review tab helps you learn the verses. If you tap on a verse in the Review section, you get the option to either try to learn the verse or test yourself. If you choose to learn the verse, you'll be able to see the entire verse. And the way this works is you'll be able to see all of the verses at the top, and you can read through it to try to memorize it. Then when you're ready to practice, just focus on the keyboard and type just the first letter of each word as you try to recite it. So it would look something like this. Love is patient, love is kind, and if you forgot what the next word was and accidentally typed something different, you would get a little red shake right here and it would tell you that you're typing the wrong letter. At that point, you can look back up at the verse to see what the next section is and continue memorizing. Once you start to get the hang of this, you can make it harder by tapping this plus icon here and you'll get three options. The first option is to set a cursor, and if you tap this, you can select somewhere within the verses, then confirm the selection, and it will remove all the text before that selection. This allows you to memorize just a little bit of the verse at a time. If you tap the X, it'll go back to the normal mode. The second option is called hide ends, and if you tap this, it'll only show you the first letter of every word in the verses. And in this mode, you can still use the keyboard to work your way through the verses. The last option is to hide everything, and that just turns everything into asterisks. So you'll still be able to see how many letters each word is, but you won't have any other clues besides that. If you're partway through a verse and you just want to start over again, you can tap this icon in the top right and it'll reset everything for you. Once you're done practicing the verse and you're ready to try reciting it, you can tap this box right here and switch to test. From here, you're shown absolutely nothing and you have to recite everything from memory using the first letter of each word like I showed you guys earlier. If you get stuck here, there's a little eye icon and if you hold that, it'll slowly make the words visible. And that's super useful if you always forget one or two words. As you're going through your verse, you'll see a percentage at the top, and this is the percentage that you've gotten correct so far. But if you make a mistake, you'll see the percentage drop down. And as you keep making mistakes, it'll drop down further. And at the end of the test, you'll be given a success rate. From there, you can redo the test, exit, or practice your next verse. If you have at least four verses that you're trying to memorize, and you tap these two boxes in the upper right corner in the review section, you'll be met with a quiz section. And if you tap this plus icon in the upper left, you'll be able to select the verses to add for the quiz. Now just tap the checkbox, and you'll be given a snippet of some of the verses, and you'll have to figure out which reference goes to those verses. So if I tap Galatians here, it'll move on to the next quiz. If I select the wrong reference, I'll get a red box, and it'll highlight the correct answer with a green box. If you tap this box right here, it'll switch to show you the reference, and you have to figure out which verse goes to that reference. And in the upper right corner, it keeps track of how many you got right over the total number of questions asked. If you back out of here, you get another option in the upper right corner that looks like three cards. If you tap this, you'll be brought to a flashcard section. And if you tap this plus icon here, you can select which verses you want to do the flashcards with. By default, you'll be given a reference, and you have to try to recite the verse from memory. Then you can tap the card to see if you got it right. If you got it right, you can tap known and move on to the next verse. If instead of trying to memorize the verses, you want to memorize the references, you can tap this icon right here, and that'll switch it to show you the verse instead. So now you can read through the verse, then it, tap it to see if you got the reference correct, and if you did, tap known. And if you want to start all over again, you can tap this refresh icon right here, and that loads all four cards again. And you can also tap this icon here to shuffle the deck. 
And what this will do is make all the verses appear in a random order. In an attempt to gamify learning Bible verses, you can also earn badges by completing different tasks. And as you can see, some of these badges are pretty intense with having to memorize upwards of 5,000 verses. If you're having trouble figuring out which verses you want to memorize, you can add the verse of the day by tapping this plus icon here, and this will be a new verse every day. Or you can go to the library, select a category, and add one of the preset verses from here. So as you can tell, this app makes it incredibly easy to memorize scripture, which is why I highly recommend that every Christian has this application. This next app is one that most Christians are probably already familiar with, but I highly doubt you have any idea how powerful the application is, and that's the YouVersion Bible app. For starters, you have the obvious Bible portion of it, where you can read through the Bible, you can tap a verse and highlight it in a ton of different colors. And if you tap these three dots here, you could choose literally any color you'd like. And that's great for highlighting different verses for different reasons. Maybe there's a verse you want to try to memorize, so you'll highlight that in yellow. While there's another verse that you want to do some more research on, so you can highlight that in green. And that makes it really easy to quickly identify why you highlighted different verses. Besides highlighting a verse, you can also quickly share the verse, create an image out of it, you can compare different versions, and if you tap these lines up here, you can change the order that the versions appear, and you can also add more versions if you'd like. Besides that, you can also add a note on that specific verse, so if you found something particularly intriguing that you want to remember later, you can write that down here. And if you have multiple verses that you want to write a note about, you can just tap add verse, navigate to the other verse, and you'll be able to see both of them side by side. By default, all of your notes will be private, but if you have friends who also use the YouVersion application, you'll have the option to share your notes with your friends as well. Or if you want anyone who uses the YouVersion application to see your note, you can make it a public note. The pray option is kind of like adding a note, but it's more for if you want to pray through a specific verse and you want to write your prayer out. You also get the option to quickly bookmark a verse, copy it, or see related notes from other users that made their notes public. If you swipe up after selecting a verse, you get the option to quickly add the verse to a background that you could use as a wallpaper on your phone. So as you can see, there's a bunch of pre-made ones, or you can scroll down and select your own background image. Once you've selected an image, you can customize the text and download the completed image. At the top, you can quickly change which version you're reading the Bible in, and there are a ton of different versions to choose from. And you can quickly jump around to other books in the Bible by tapping the current book, then tap the new book you want, tap the chapter, and tap the verse. My most frequently used feature with the YouVersion Bible app is this little speaker icon here. And what this does is reads the Bible to you out loud. And they have different voices depending on the version you're using. And if you want to speed up the reading, you can tap this 1x in the corner and go all the way to 2x. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. If you want to listen to the Bible as you're going to sleep, you can use this timer option on the bottom right and set the timer for anywhere from 5 minutes to 2 hours. So it'll continue to read the Bible until it hits that time limit, then it'll stop reading. Tapping these arrows skips backwards and forwards through the verses, and that is in sync with where the audio is. If you want a different narrator but still want to use the same version, you can tap Switch Narrator and choose from other available options. If the text is either too big or too small for you, you can tap these two A's in the upper right corner and simply shrink the text or make it bigger. And you can also change the spacing between the lines and change the background color or even the font. If you're trying to find a verse and you only know a few of the words in that verse, you can tap the search icon here and type the part of the verse you remember. Then just tap the search icon and you'll see every verse related to what you searched for. At the top, you'll also see various things to search for. So instead of searching through the Bible, you can search for videos related to that text, plans, which we'll talk about in a minute, podcasts, churches, and images. Or you can select all and see everything in one shot. If you switch over to the Plans tab, you'll see your active reading plans, and if you tap Find Plans, you'll get access to hundreds of other reading plans within a bunch of different categories. You can search by these core categories on the top, or subcategories below that, or if you're looking for something really specific, you can tap the search icon and type a topic you're looking for. Each plan runs for a number of days depending on which one you select, and when you start a plan, you can do it by yourself or with a friend so you guys can start the plan on the same day and talk about it on a daily basis. And the plans are typically split between a devotional section, which gives you some things to think about when you read the following verses. And the second part is obviously the verses relevant to that day's devotional. So this is a great tool if you want to dive deeper into a specific topic but don't know where to start. And if you scroll down further on the main plans page, you'll see other important topics like marriage, dating, work, leadership, etc. 
The discover section is the search bar that I showed you guys earlier, but this will automatically search through everything instead of just one of the sections of the app. If you tap more, you get the option to set up a verse of the day notification. So if you tap verse of the day, then tap the settings here, you can enable this daily push notification. So once a day, you'll get a Bible verse pushed to your notification shade. And you can have the notification show up as just text or an image. And if you really want, you can have it emailed to you as well. Besides setting up the verse of the day, this is also where you'll see any prayers you set up, highlights, bookmarks, any images and notes you put together. You can see all of your badges. And these are earned by either completing different challenges or doing different activities within the app. And this is sort of like trying to gamify reading the Bible. Bible app activity will show you how many days in a row you've been reading the Bible and how many weeks in a row you've read the Bible. At the very bottom, you get a settings option, and this is where you can change your profile and notification settings, as well as set up a kid's Bible experience. And what this does is limit the app to age appropriate content for kids. You can also enable low light mode here, which just inverts the colors to make it easier on your eyes at night. And you can also enable and disable different Bible reading features here, like red letters when Jesus is speaking, footnotes, the verse picker, etc. If you go to the home tab, you'll see the verse of the day, and sometimes you'll see a video about the verse of the day, as well as a guided prayer based on that verse. And if you scroll down, you'll see a curated list of things related to what you've been doing in the app. And if you tap the letter in the upper right corner, this brings you to a snapshot of your profile where you can quickly see your bookmarks, notes, highlights, etc., as well as how many days in a row you've been reading the Bible and how many weeks in a row you've been reading it. And if you scroll down, you'll see recent activities, including plans you've been reading, as well as some highlights you've made. Once you've installed the Uversion Bible app, you can go back to your home screen, then long press to add a widget. Then you'll see this Bible option, and if you tap this twirl down, you'll get three different options for adding a verse of the day. You can show the verse of the day in a basic text option, which is the one that I personally use. You can show it in an image, which is kind of hit or miss, and you can also get a shortcut to one of your current reading plans. While the Uversion Bible app offers a lot of tools to study the Bible, the Blue Letter Bible app takes it a step further with some super powerful tools to help you break down the original Greek and Hebrew. And I'll give you a quick example of why that's important right now. So right now we're in Matthew 14 and we're taking a look at when Jesus and Peter walked on the water. If I tap verse 26, when they first saw Jesus walking on the water, then tap interlinear, I'll be able to see the original Greek text as well as a word for word translation. And this really helps to provide context because there are some words in Greek and Hebrew that don't translate directly to English. So sometimes it's helpful to look at the definitions of the original Greek or Hebrew. Specifically, let's look at the word saw here. The word for saw in the original Greek is horeo, at least I think that's how it's pronounced. If you're not sure, you can tap this little speaker icon here. Strong's G 3708, horao. So clearly I was wrong, it's horao. And if you tap that word, and scroll down a bit, you'll see how it's been used in the Bible. And you can see that this is a pretty basic definition of the word saw. It's to see with your eyes, to perceive that something's there, to know that it's there, right? So they just acknowledge that Jesus was on the water. Now, if I go back to the Bible and look at verse 30, when Peter saw the wind, became afraid, and then began to sink, and tap this verse, then tap interlinear again, and scroll down a bit, you'll see in the original Greek, the word that was translated as saw, was actually the original word blepo, which is different than the other word. So if I tap this and read through these definitions, you can see that it holds more weight to it. This word means to turn your thoughts towards something, to consider it, to contemplate it, to look at it, to weigh carefully and examine something. So when they saw Jesus, they were just acknowledging his presence. But when Peter looked at the wind, he was focused on it. He was contemplating it and he was examining it carefully. So he knew Jesus was there, but he was focused on the wind. And that's why he started to sink. So there's these little nuances that you can only figure out by studying the original Greek or Hebrew. Jumping back into interlinear, I want to point out a few more things. You'll see a few options here called forward reverse, forward inline, and reverse inline. Forward is showing you the word for word translation of the original Greek in order and the direct translation to the English. Reverse shows you the current order that the English is written in and the original Greek words that it was derived from. Forward inline is the same as forward, but it just puts it in an easier to read format. And reverse inline is the same as the reverse option, but again, in that same easier to read format. And if you wanna make it even easier to read, you can tap these view options here and disable certain parts so it's less being shown on the page at a time. Some more useful options are translation comparisons, which will show you a bunch of different translations stacked on top of each other. And if you wanna change the translation order, just tap this icon in the upper left, tap my Bibles, and change the order here. This page also gives you a parallel option, which allows you to have two different versions of the Bible appear right next to each other. So if I enable this, 
then select a second version and tap the home icon, I can see two versions side by side for quick comparison. And one quick tip when using the parallel reading mode, if you turn your phone sideways, it makes it a lot easier to read. Unless you have something like a Galaxy Z Fold 4, in which case you can read it perfectly fine in the regular orientation. Cross references shows you other places in the Bible where similar verses are written. Text commentaries is exactly that. It's a bunch of text commentaries from different pastors and Bible scholars on various books of the Bible and verses. And this is also a great tool if you're having a hard time understanding specific verses. And here's a quick example of how the commentaries can be super helpful. So in Matthew 5, Jesus says that if someone compels you to go one mile with them, go with them too. Now, reading that without the context of the culture at the time doesn't make any sense. But when you read through this commentary, you'll see that at the time, Judea was under Roman military occupation, and under that law, any Roman soldier could command a Jewish person to carry the soldier's pack for one mile, but just for one mile. So here, Jesus is saying that if they're required to carry it for one mile, go ahead and walk with them a second mile out of love. So understanding the context of that verse makes it much more easy to understand. Audio and video are just like the text commentaries, but it's in audio and video. Dictionaries will show different words and phrases from the verse. And if you select one of those phrases or words, it'll define it and show you other places in the Bible where that phrase or words were used. You also get the option to write a note, bookmark a verse, share the verse, or copy it to a clipboard, as well as highlight it. If you want to set your phone up on a stand and you want to scroll automatically for you, you can tap these two arrows down here and it'll automatically start scrolling. And if you tap them again, it'll stop scrolling. If you tap this up arrow, it'll take you back to the top of the chapter and tapping the back arrow will take you to the previous book and chapter you were looking at. And tapping the forward arrow will move you back the other way. The Bible with the speaker icon will allow you to have the Bible read to you out loud and you can choose different versions to have it read in. And if you tap this icon in the upper left corner, you'll see all of your notes, bookmarks, highlights, etc. And if you scroll a bit further down, you can change your settings. And this includes things like your font size, your line height, whether or not to use red letters for when Jesus is speaking, and more. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, this is where you could change the Bible scroll speed. So if that previous scroll speed was too slow for you, you can make it faster here. So if you're ever reading some Bible verses and it's just not making any sense to you, you don't understand what's going on, using the Blue Letter Bible is a great way to gain a deeper understanding of what's happening. This fourth app will change how you view Jesus and his disciples in a good way and make the Bible come to life when you read it. That app is the Angel Studios app, so you can watch a series called The Chosen for free. This is a far cry from the loads of cheesy Christian movies and shows you've seen in the past. Between the set design, special effects, and acting, this is a top-notch series. If you don't consider yourself a Christian and don't know anything about Jesus, the show is great just for the pure entertainment value. But if you are a Christian, the show brings to life some of the biggest moments in the New Testament and has personally deepened my understanding of the magnitude of some of the events of the Bible. Now, I want to be clear here, though. This is not a word-for-word -word representation of the Bible. There are lots of things that aren't recorded in the Bible that are depicted in this show like some of the general interactions between the disciples, as well as some of the backstories on the disciples. These details simply weren't recorded in the Bible, so the writers of The Chosen added backstories that would make sense based on the time period and help make the characters more personable. So use this as a way to help you visualize the events of the Bible, but don't treat it as a Bible replacement or even as 100% factual. Regardless, they just released season three, and I'm gonna go binge watch that now, so Merry Christmas, everyone, and may God bless you and your family in the coming year. That's it for this tech episode. I'll catch you guys in the next one.